Hello everyone, my name is Augusto Argandoña. Welcome to my watercolor tutorial. This demonstration is one in a series that I have of uh, beach images. Both uh, images uh, can be on the Atlantic coast, Pacific coast, or right here on the Gulf of Mexico. Our beaches here in Florida are really beautiful beaches. We don't have high dunes like uh, some beaches on the Atlantic coast. Uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, but on the other hand, some of our beaches have beautiful scenery, very tropical scenery. This composition is a very simple image. Uh, I'm going to have uh, the, most of the paper will be covered by the water and, uh, and the, the sand and the dunes. And I'm going to be showing very little sky. So, so uh, and I'm also going to have uh, sort of a path diagonal path, if you will, so that it will be more interesting than just having a straight in the center. This area is going to have quite a bit of uh, shade. Uh, this will be mostly in the sunlight, although there will be some dark areas for the, um, for the greenery, the grasses and so forth, and a little bit at the top of those and mostly in the shade. So I'm using a uh, Arches paper, 140 pound cold press, and uh, my pigments are a variety of brands, but for the most part I do use Winsor & Newton, and uh, I use um, uh, more partial towards uh, flat brushes, so I use mostly my flat brushes. Uh, occasionally I will use some round brushes. So let's get to the fun part of this uh, demonstration and that is the painting. So I'm going to go ahead and start by adding some water to the sky area. Uh, not too much there. I'm, gonna not, I'm not touching the, the horizon line. I just want to keep it uh, light and not, uh, not with water in that area. Uh, I'm going to also bring some manganese blue with uh, a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue to start getting a little bit of uh, the color of the sky. I'm going to leave it. Uh, I'm going to leave it without too much pigmentation, uh, but I'm going to have some color in some of some of these areas over here. Um, just some quick strokes to show the a little bit of a wind blown effect in the for the clouds and like I said I'm gonna bring in some of the blue right to the horizon but I'm gonna leave it like that and that's pretty much it for for this guy I don't want to do too much there the next thing that I'm going to do will be to I'm going to change brushes to a wider brush and I'm going to bring quite a bit of water to the sand area. Uh, so I'm going to bring that over here and we'll go to the area where the, where the water will start breaking onto the sand. And all these areas will, be, will have quite a bit of water. Cover this and that. Okay, now, and uh, go back to my one inch brush. And while that is uh, wet, I'm gonna wait a little bit until the paper is beginning to, the sheen on the paper is beginning to dissipate. So, but now I'm gonna go ahead and use some cobalt blue with uh, uh, brown matter and start getting a little bit of the the coloration of the uh, sand and the shadow areas. I'm going to also add a little bit of uh, raw rose matter to that. And, and this, I'm going to add some of those colors over here, like that. And somewhere right over here on this side, not too much on this side. Um, a little bit of more rose matter with uh, the brown matter and the cobalt blue. It makes a really, really nice um, 
gray tones. I'm going to add some of that over here. Notice that the paper is still wet, so the colors are blending really nicely. My paper is at an angle, uh, probably around, oh, I would say uh, 10 degrees, something like that. I'm going to add a little bit more blue over here, like that. And uh, more cobalt blue over here in the shadow areas, too. Like this. Now I'm going to start bringing a little bit more of the brown matter to complement those colors, uh, not to make it to look too blue, although the color, the cobalt blue, adds a really nice gray in tone for the, for the sand and gives a really good definition. I'm also going to while I'm, my paper is still damp, I'm going to bring some cerulean blue in some areas, like that. This area is going to dry much lighter, so I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more of those colors, the, the blue and the brown matter to this area. that the paper is beginning to dry now so I'm gonna have to be a little bit more careful yeah beginning to get some some hard edges so I'm gonna stop that and um, so while the paper is drying there um, I don't want to start doing the grasses because it's uh, it's gonna be um, the pigment is going to move all over the creation and I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start doing the water. I'm going to bring some cobalt teal, a little bit of manganese blue mixed into that with uh, some of the cobalt blue. And uh, a little carefully with the thin edge of my brush, I'm going to start doing the, the horizon. Like that there and I'm gonna bring I'm gonna use more of the broad side of the brush to bring right the, the water right into the into the lower area and I'm gonna just have a little bit of that over here leave some whites for the the waves that are beginning to break onto the onto the closer to the shore and I'm gonna bring this blue in a sort of a curved way to, to show that the, again there's more waves breaking onto the onto the sand like that. Uh, closer to the sand I'm going to bring a little bit more of that um, cobalt teal. Like that. There we are. There. And that's pretty much it. So uh, now I'm going to use a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue and do the horizon. Well, the paper there is still kind of damp and you don't end up with a line. I clean my brush, remove the moisture from the brush and kind of even this area out a little bit, like that. So the water is pretty much done. I may go back to do it later, but for now it's damp. And now the paper is still damp over here, so which is good. Now I'm going to start adding color for the grasses. I'm going to add some um, rose sienna, aureole in yellow, and cerulean blue 
to some of the grass areas in this section, like that, like that. This is the base color for now. Also gonna bring a little bit of uh, cobalt blue into some of these areas. Like this. The paper is still kind of damp here, but uh, so let's see how this happens. Okay, I need to add a little bit more water there. I'm gonna dampen the paper, not wet it. So I'm gonna bring some of some water, just dampen the paper there. And then I'm gonna bring in more of those colors that I'm using for the grasses. Now that's better. It's kind of soft. That's the effect that I wanted to get. A little bit more of the raw sienna over here. I'm going to combine those areas like that. This was a little bit too wet, so that's what happens there. I'm going to start darkening some of these areas. See, that, that, that doesn't bother me because I'm going to take care of that. There we are, something like this over here. There. Okay, this area is still kind of there. So we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to bring some little bit of water here. Same colors for the grasses, cerulean blue, blue sienna, a little bit of alveolar and yellow, but mostly the raw sienna with the greens. Um, well, the paper is still kind of damp there. We'll do the same thing, a little bit more raw sienna. Colors over here. More Rosiana now. The paper is almost dry, so I'm gonna start adding some other, some of more of those colors. A little drier over here, which is good. Somebody's mowing the grass. It's making some noise. Bring that over here, like this. Okay, so now I'm gonna bring some burnt, burnt amber. And uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of a darker brown on this area. Uh, same thing over here. But the paper is still damp. Okay, now I'm going to slightly wet the paper and uh, bring some ultramarine, uh, use some um, burnt amber, quite a bit of burnt amber, ultramarine. Start doing some of the darker areas in this in this section, like that. There, like that. There, some over here too. Maybe a little bit of burnt sienna. I'm pretty much doing a dry brush now. A little bit of sepia. All of this is being done with a dry brush now. It doesn't look too much right now, but uh, that's going to change pretty fast. There we are. Okay, now I'm going to add more um, 
Blue Sea, no? And Cerulean Blue. In my brush because I was beginning to look muddy. Okay, so now with the, I'm going to take the brush, put pressure against my finger like this, and tilt it and separate the bristles like that. So now uh, I'm going to come over here and do these grasses, holding the brush handle way back. Give a, a little bit of movement to those grasses. I'm going to add just a tiny bit more water. And do the same thing with the bristles. Separate the bristles and do that. I'm going to bring in some of the some of the. Uh, Cerulean blue. Like that. Okay, over here in that area, we're going to fix it just like this. small amount of moisture to the brush, that's all. More cerulean blue with this raw sienna. And do the same thing, separate the bristles. And I'll do this over here. And that. Now we go to this area and do the same thing. Separate the bristles and we come over here and start doing some of those tall grasses overlapping the, the water to give a little bit more of an indication of uh, high grasses and a little bit of raised dune over there. A little bit more cerulean blue. And I'm going to change now from the cerulean blue to ultramar ultramarine blue. I'll make some darker grasses over here. And that Bring some sepia to that mixture to create the really dark grasses now. And now, now we're going to separate the bristles again and go really dark over here. And start doing some of the individual grasses too. Separate the bristles. Like that. Some over here. We're going to get more ultramarine into that area to show that these grasses are in this shape. Just like that. Same thing over here. Make them darker. And I'm going to 
some some over here. Going in the opposite direction. Let's do some very dark ones over here. All of this is pretty much done with a dry brush now. And that. Okay, so now we let that dry. Clean my brush really good. I'm going to add a small amount of water into this area without touching the greens. And now I'm going to change brushes to a smaller flat brush. This is a quarter inch flat. I'm going to get some of those grays that I have in my palette. A little bit more cobalt blue to that. And start adding a, a few of the in areas where the sand has been disturbed by people walking on them from it. So this is indications of like some like footprints and things like that. Just like that, there we are. Getting smaller and smaller towards the other side. Change brushes and uh, you'll get some uh, cerulean blue. And starting a little bit of the cooler colors over here. Cobalt blue there too. Some cooler colors. A little bit of the rose matter in some of these areas. Like that. So this area doesn't end up with a hard edge. I'm going to add a little bit of water there. Same thing over here. I'm going to add a little bit of water over here too. Bring some of the color blue with the rose matter. There. Okay, now that's pretty much it for the beach. Now I'm going to a little bit more ultimate to this area. Make this a little darker. Something over here. There we are. Same thing over here. Go the opposite side to create a lower grasses like that. Okay, so that's it. And lastly, I'm going to take a smaller brush, get some of this gray, a little bit of uh, sepia. A little bit of ultramarine, with a sort of a gray tone, and uh, I'm going to do some of some sea seagulls, the ever-present seagulls, flying near the near the 
Beach. Like that. And also, I'm going to take this small flat brush, get a little bit of the aureole and yellow from Sienna with manganese blue. And give this wave that's folding over here a little bit of color. There we are. A little bit over here too. Now and then a little bit more of the blue. Same thing here. There. Um, the beach is done. So what I'm going to do with Leslie is I'm going to take us a little, little bit of this color and sign it. There. Now I'm going to remove this um, tape, which is pretty sticky, and you're going to see how this looks. Painting the beach is a wonderful experience. You don't have to deal with too much, no, no man-made items unless you want to put something there, but um, for the most part, is a matter of uh, areas of color and a little bit of texture. So now I'm going to move this. I'm going to bring this other board. Uh, I'm going to put it over here. Um, and there it is. I'm going to minimize this a little bit. Maybe I should just leave it like that. See if I can minimize. There. And there you are. A day at the beach. Thank you very much for watching my demonstration. I hope you enjoy my painting. Until next time.